because you had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the tinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. The wiretap. Ha-ha! Have a look at this. Ah, ooh, that. <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Rubble, 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 rubble! What are you doing in her room? Were you boating her? Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Ooh, ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can! It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is the phone. Right? The phone itself. Yep. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to do to hold on to for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Ha-ha! Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Uh-oh. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> She's going to explode again. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May, shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You lawyer. <laughs> it's not fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh. Oh, and then she cries? Are you fucking serious? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why the wiretap? I don't think she did it. Why'd you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping er, irrelevant? Gosh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who thought that, and of course, I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say, way! Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmph. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. <laughs> Iced coffee? I think I'm making this up. Ask the bellboy. Uh-oh. Ergo, the witness was not at the scene at the time of the murder. I didn't say she was. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, they're going to let her walk, just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have something to say? Well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy as a witness. Continue examining. I say call the bellboy. 
defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sucked it quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. Oh my god. I thought you were something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? I say accept it. Alright, I've got nothing to lose, except for, well, everything. <laughs> Understood, I accept your condition. Huff, fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. He <laughs> says, wait! <laughs> Alright, the court calls the hotel bellboy. Leave her ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. <laughs> He's still holding the tray? What the hell? Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea suit looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Alright, we got another testimony here. I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9. On the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. You know what? We just found hole in the testimony. Because she said she saw the murder at 9. If she was getting the iced coffee at exactly 9, there's absolutely no way she could have been looking out the window. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Here we go. Alright, Maya will be finished. I got it. I got it. As soon as he says exactly nine, I've got him. Alright, the head bellboy. Yep, we know that. I believe I received a call for after eight in the evening for, I guess, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. Nine on the dot, you say? Yes. I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine, the time of the murder. Haha. -ha. I brought it to her precisely the requested time, of course. Precisely 9, then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, teehee, I'd like, like, iced coffee at exactly 9. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of 9, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. Okay. Spellboy wouldn't have any reason to lie, but I have to find something to use in his testimony. One more time. Okay. Let's try this. He believes you've got to call at 8. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I, ahem, er, ahem, ha, <laughs> I saw her titties. The point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? Okay. Just curious. Here's your movement by Larry Butts. Shit, I should have brought up the glass to April May, shouldn't I? Because she didn't mention the glass and what she heard. That sucks. Uh. I brought her at precisely the requested time, of course. I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. Let's try that. You're sure it was Miss April May herself? 
Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. In an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with a embracer, sir. Embracer? Isn't that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. Or a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the billboard to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing here. Is... is that it? Tisk tisk. Finally you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest. Wait, please wait. Yes? Does the fence have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice or charade has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Check-in, room service, or bed making? 